Hey guys, Ray here. If you're here to see the install of this system in my RV, I already posted that video. I'll put a link in the description. But today I'm going to be testing the output capacity of this single battery and this grow watt power system. Now, this whole system cost me less than a generator, but I think I can actually run three air conditioners off this without a soft start. Let's find out. Okay, so when I installed this system, I installed these 30 amp RV plugs. That, that way, if I go camping with friends, they can plug into my RV if they want power or if they want to run their air conditioner. So I'm not sure the size of this air conditioner, but I think it's bigger than average because it's a single air conditioner for this 30 foot RV. So there have been some people in my comments that have said I will never be able to run multiple RVs off these, off this one system. So let's just find out. All right, let's see how much power it takes just to run my air conditioner on top of my RV. Now I just bought this new clamp meter and it has a inrush button. So I can see how much, how much starting power it takes to run this air conditioner. Let's start it up. Okay, it should be measuring inrush right now. This is the breaker that powers the air conditioner. I'm gonna turn on my air conditioner. Now the fan should turn on first, and then maybe in 15 seconds, the uh, compressor will turn on. So this should start turning on shortly. There's the fan. So my air conditioner should start just a second. All right, it is running at 1.3 two kilowatts more than I thought okay let's go look at the inrush current 52 amps inrush current just gonna turn this off so that is almost 6,300 watts so I think in the specs the grow watt says that it can handle like twice its output capacity so instead of the 3,000 watts it can handle like a 6,000 watt spike so it already went over that just to start this air con this air conditioner. But let's go ahead and try some other things. Let's try my electric microwave fridge. Then we'll turn the microwave on. While those are running, let's try the air conditioner. So we'll turn the electric fridge on. So I've got a Victron smart shunt attached to the battery and it looks like the fridge is pulling uh, 380 watts there, the third item down. I'm going to run my uh, microwave. I'll just put it, start it for 20 seconds. With the microwave running and the electric fridge, almost 2000 watts. Even though the microwave is, it says it's like a thousand watt or a 1200 watt microwave, um, it takes more power when it's running. With both of these items running, it's 2000 watts. It's about one and a half air conditioners. So given that scenario, I'm going to put the microwave on for two minutes. I've got a pot of water in here and I'm gonna, the fridge is already running. So I'm gonna start the microwave for two minutes and then I'm going to fire up the air conditioner. Let me just double check it. I don't have any solar power assisting. So this is coming straight from the battery into the load right now. Now there's a lot of strain on this single battery probably get um, another battery but uh, this is going to test this thing this is the EG4 GLL battery so I did this test before but I think I had the solar on the RV assisting so um, I don't think it'll do it but let's find out so one other thing to note here is uh, my blower fan in my RV that blows the cool air around it's running off the 12 volt system along with my jacks so this is a 48 volt battery and then I'm converting it to 12 volts right here. And so this is feeding my entire 12 volt system. So the inverter is only running the compressor. The blower is running off the 12 volt system, but I have this smart shunt that'll measure all the power being drawn from the battery. That's what we're gonna watch when we start this up. It's gonna have a base load of 2000 watts and then it needs another 6,000 watts to start that air conditioner up. Okay, I've got 372 watts from the electric compressed electric fridge. So now we're gonna start the microwave. Two minutes. 
Let that ramp up. Okay, pulling 2000 watts from the battery. Okay, here goes the air conditioner. First the fan should be turning on. There it goes. It, it's running. Yeah, it's running the compressor. It's running the air conditioning compressor. It started the air conditioner. 3,400 watts coming from the battery. It's at 103% capacity right now. Should be shutting down pretty soon, but still running. There's some more watts, like 200 watts coming out of the 12 volt system out of the battery right here. Still running it. The microwave's still running inside. Okay, the microwave just stopped. Wow. So that's too hot to touch. Sheesh. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty crazy. Um, 6,000 watts to start up the air conditioner with the inrush current. You couldn't see that on the Victron smart shunt because it was like too fast. And I had a 2,000 watt base load. So this is a GLL server rack battery from Signature Solar. It has this nice screen on here. This is the version 2 mo uh, model of this battery. So I tried the same test using this battery, but this one actually had a hard time starting the air conditioner unless it was 100% charged. This one couldn't start the air conditioner. I think this battery has really strict BMS settings. At least that's what someone else in my comments mentioned. But this has the capacity of right around four of the Battleborn 12 volt batteries. So four Battleborn 12 volt batteries, that's gonna cost you right around just under $4,000. So this thing is only $1,750. And with the Battleborn batteries, you don't get this nice screen. And this, I also got at Signature Solar. This is the GrowWatt 3048 ES model. This is an inverter, an MPPT solar charge controller, and an AC charger, and a whole bunch of other things. But really, you basically need this and this. I've got my little, uh, I wired up this cord and my, my shore power just plugs right into that. It's super easy. So I've got five large solar panels in series up on my roof, and that's totaling about 200 volts. But if you can't fit that many panels, or if you wanna have more of your panels in parallel, you probably wanna get the GrowWatt 48P model. It'll function at a lower voltage. And this unit is only $700 from Signature Solar. So if you want to buy a system that costs you like $10,000 or $20,000, you've come to the wrong channel. I don't like spending that much money, but this thing has a ton of power. And if you're a real cheapskate <laughs> like me, you can install some of these used solar panels. These are only $50 a piece. But if you use those affiliate links, it'll help support the channel. I'm going to do one more test. I'm going to run the electric water heater, see how much power that uses. All right, I stopped the microwave and the fridge and the air conditioner. So this is just running on the electric water heater right now, 1500 watts. Let me turn the air conditioner on one more time. I think I just heard it turn on, there it goes. Okay, almost 3000 watts. I'm just gonna let this run for a little while. No solar, just the battery. Okay, from the inverter, it's pulling 2.86 kilowatts. This it's just a little bit warm right here. It's cool, but it's just barely warm. It's not hot or anything. It's right here. It's the exhaust, I believe. Here, everything's nice and cool. So from the 48 volt battery, it's pulling 62 amps right there. If this was a 12 volt system or 24 volt, this would be, you know, double. Or if it's a 12 volt system, it'd be four times that. So that'd be. You have to have, that's why I like the 48 volt batter, battery, because it just has a lot more output capacity. So it's pretty good. I'm just gonna let this run for a little bit longer. It's almost been an hour, 651 here. 29% battery life, but this actually isn't quite right. I was, I was looking at the battery and it's showing 35%. So this smart shunt isn't quite synced up. Looks like my water heater turned off. Like it took about half hour to run 
the water heater, get it all hot, and then it turned off. So the air conditioner's been running straight though. And this is just a combiner box so I can add more solar panels. Right now I have five solar panels up on the roof, but I can easily add more with a ground array. Using like those $50 used solar panels if I want to add, add extra power to this. But yeah guys, I'm in Utah, so I'm not, not actually going to be using the air conditioning that much. Maybe in the mountains an air conditioner might turn on once in a while, but I should be able to run two RVs pretty easily. Now I am going to Lake Powell, which is a desert area where the air conditioners could be running a long time. And I think for that scenario, I'm going to have an, put an extra battery in here. I'm going to put that other cheap, cheaper battery in here, the Life Power 4. And these ones should be able to communicate. Uh, I'll just hook these in parallel. It's probably pretty hard on this to run it down in like two hours. But yeah, what else would you want me to try? Here are the solar panels I installed on the roof. 1600 watts here. I'm hoping that I can run the solar during the day if it's hot and the sun's out. Come to think of it, if the sun is not out, hopefully it'll be cool and I won't need my air conditioner. Here's the garden. 4.2 kilowatts. It's still running it though. There it goes. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm trying to battle my neighbor with the lawnmower running. But we'll see you next time.